Graphic design. Graphic design is the art of communication, stylizing, and problem solving through the use of type, space, and image. The field is considered a subset of visual communication and communication design, but sometimes the term graphic design is used interchangeably with these due to overlapping skills involved. Graphic designers use various methods to create and combine words, symbols, and images to create a visual representation of ideas and messages. A graphic designer may use a combination of typography, visual arts and page layout techniques to produce a final result. Graphic design often refers to both the process by which the communication is created and the products which are generated. Common uses of graphic design include identity, logos and branding, publications, magazines, newspapers and books, print advertisements, posters, billboards, website graphics and elements, signs and product packaging. For example, a product package might include a logo or other artwork, organized text and pure design elements such as images, shapes and color which unify the piece. Composition is one of the most important features of graphic design, especially when using pre-existing materials or diverse elements. History While graphic design as a discipline has a relatively recent history, first coined by William Addison and Wiggins in 1922, graphic design-like activities span the history of humankind, from the caves of Lasalle, to Rome's Trajan's column to the illuminated manuscripts of the Middle Ages, to the dazzling neons of Ginza. In both this lengthy history and in the relatively recent explosion of visual communication in the 20th and 21st centuries, there is sometimes a blurring distinction and overlapping of advertising art, graphic design and fine art. After all, they share many of the same elements, theories, principles, practices and languages, and sometimes the same benefactor or client. In advertising art the ultimate objective is the sale of goods and services. In graphic design, the essence is to give order to information, form to ideas, expression and feeling to artifacts that document human experience. The advent of printing During the Tang Dynasty, 618 to 907, between the 7th and 9th century AD, wood blocks were cut to print on textiles and later to reproduce Buddhist texts. A Buddhist scripture printed in 868 is the earliest known printed book. Beginning in the 11th century, longer scrolls and books were produced using movable type printing making books widely available during the Song Dynasty, 960 to 1279. Sometime around 1450, Johann Gutenberg's printing press made books widely available in Europe. The book design of Aldous Manutius developed the book structure which would become the foundation of Western publication design. This era of graphic design is called humanist or old style. Emergence of the design industry In late 19th century Europe, especially in the United Kingdom, the first official publication of a printed design was released which marked the separation of graphic design from fine art. In 1849, Henry Cole became one of the major forces in design education in Great Britain, informing the government of the importance of design in his Journal of Design and Manufactures. He organized the Great Exhibition as a celebration of modern industrial technology and Victorian design. From 1891 to 1896, William Morris Kelmscott Press published books that are some of the most significant of the graphic design products of the arts and crafts movement and made a very lucrative business of creating books of great stylistic refinement and selling them to the public. Morris created a market for works of graphic design in their own right to create a profession for this new type of art for aspiring individuals who wishes to earn a living through these skills. The work of the Kelmscott Press is characterized by its obsession with historical styles. This historicism was, however, Important as it amounted to the first significant reaction to the stale state of 19th century graphic design. Morris' work, along with the rest of the private press movement, directly influenced Art Nouveau and is indirectly responsible for developments in early 20th century graphic design in general. 20th century design 
The name graphic design first appeared in print in the 1922 essay New Kind of Printing Calls for New Design by William Addison Dwiggins, an American book designer in the early 20th century. Raff's graphic design, published in 1927, is considered to be the first book to use graphic design in its title. The signage in the London Underground is a classic design example of the modern era and used a typeface designed by Edward Johnston in 1916. In the 1920s, Soviet constructivism applied intellectual production in different spheres of production. The movement saw individualistic art as useless in revolutionary Russia and thus moved towards creating objects for utilitarian purposes. They designed buildings, theatre sets, posters, fabrics, clothing, furniture, logos, menus, etc. Jan Skichold codified the principles of modern typography in his 1928 book, New Typography. He later repudiated the philosophy he espoused in this book as being fascistic, but it remained very influential. Skichold, Bauhaus typographers such as Herbert Bayer and Laszlo Mulinegi, and L. Lazitsky have greatly influenced graphic design as we know it today. They pioneered production techniques and stylistic devices used throughout the 20th century. The following years saw graphic design in the modern style gain widespread acceptance and application. A boom in post-World War II American economy established a greater need for graphic design, mainly advertising and packaging. The immigration of the German Bauhaus School of Design to Chicago in 1937 brought a mass-produced minimalism to America sparking a wildfire of modern architecture and design. Notable names in mid-century modern design include Adrian Frutiger, designer of the typefaces Arnivas and Frutiger. Paul Rand, who, from the late 1930s until his death in 1996, took the principles of the Bauhaus and applied them to popular advertising and logo design, helping to create a uniquely American approach to European minimalism while becoming one of the principal pioneers of the subset of graphic design known as corporate identity. And Joseph Muller Brockman, who designed posters in a severe yet accessible manner typical of the 1950s and 1970s era. The growth of the professional graphic design industry has grown in parallel with the rise of consumerism. This has raised some concerns and criticisms notably from within the graphic design community with the First Things First Manifesto. First launched by Ken Garland in 1964, it was republished as the First Things First 2000 Manifesto in 1999 in the magazine Emigre 51 stating we propose a reversal of priorities in favor of more useful, lasting and democratic forms of communication, a man shift away from product marketing and toward the exploration and production of a new kind of meaning. The scope of debate is shrinking. It must expand. Consumerism is running uncontested. It must be challenged by other perspectives expressed, in part, through the visual languages and resources of design. Both editions attracted signatures from respected design practitioners and thinkers, for example, Rudy Vandelens, Eric Spyekuman, Ellen Lupton, and Rick Poiner. The 2000 Manifesto was also notably published in Adbusters known for its strong critiques of visual culture. Applications From road signs to technical schematics, from inter-office memorandums to reference manuals, graphic design enhances transfer of knowledge and visual messages. Readability and legibility is enhanced by improving the visual presentation and layout of text. Design can also aid in selling a product or idea through effective visual communication. It is applied to products and elements of company identity like logos, colors, packaging, and text. Together these are defined as branding, see also advertising. Branding has increasingly become important in the range of services offered by many graphic designers, alongside corporate identity. Whilst the terms are often used interchangeably, branding is more strictly related to the identifying mark or trade name for a product or service whereas corporate identity can have a broader meaning relating to the structure and ethos of a company, as well as to the company's external image. Graphic designers will often form part of a team working on corporate identity and branding projects. Other members of that team can include marketing professionals, communications consultants and commercial writers.
Textbooks are designed to present subjects such as geography, science, and math. These publications have layouts which illustrate theories and diagrams. A common example of graphics in use to educate is diagrams of human anatomy. Graphic design is also applied to layout and formatting of educational material to make the information more accessible and more readily understandable. Graphic design is applied in the entertainment industry in decoration, scenery, and visual storytelling. Other examples of design for entertainment purposes include novels, comic books, DVD covers, opening credits and closing credits in filmmaking, and programs and props on stage. This could also include artwork used for t-shirts and other items screen printed for sale. From scientific journals to news reporting, the presentation of opinion and facts is often improved with graphics and thoughtful compositions of visual information, known as information design. Newspapers, magazines, blogs, television and film documentaries may use graphic design to inform and entertain. With the advent of the web, information designers with experience in interactive tools such as Adobe Flash are increasingly being used to illustrate the background to news stories. Skills. A graphic design project may involve the stylization and presentation of existing text and either pre-existing imagery or images developed by the graphic designer. Artistic pieces can be incorporated in both traditional and digital form, which involves the use of visual arts, typography, and page layout techniques for publications and marketing. For example, a newspaper story begins with the journalists and photojournalists and then becomes the graphic designer's job to organize the page into a reasonable layout and determine if any other graphic elements should be required. In a magazine article or advertisement, often the graphic designer or art director will commission photographers or illustrators to create original pieces just to be incorporated into the design layout. Or the designer may utilize stock imagery or photography. Contemporary design practice has been extended to the modern computer, for example in the use of WYSIWYG user interfaces, often referred to as interactive design, or multimedia design. Visual Arts Design Before any graphic elements may be applied to a design, the graphic elements must be originated by means of visual arts skills. These graphics are often, but not always, developed by a graphic designer. Visual arts include works which are primarily visual in nature using anything from traditional media, to photography or digital art. Graphic design principles may be applied to each graphic art element individually as well as to the final composition. Typography Typography is the art, craft and techniques of type design, modifying type glyphs, and arranging type. Type glyphs, characters, are created and modified using a variety of illustration techniques. The arrangement of type is the selection of typefaces, point size, tracking, the space between all characters used, kerning, the space between two specific characters, and leading, line spacing. Typography is performed by typesetters, compositors, typographers, graphic artists, art directors, and clerical workers. Until the digital age, typography was a specialized occupation. Digitization opened up typography to new generations of visual designers and lay users. Experiential graphic design Experiential graphic design is the application of communication skills to the build environment. This area of graphic design differs from the others in that it requires practitioners to possess a lot more knowledge of creating large-scale physical installations which have to be manufactured and withstand the same sort of environmental conditions as buildings. Therefore it is the most cross-disciplinary collaborate process involving designers, fabricators, city planners, architects, manufacturers and large project building teams. Environmental graphic designers try to solve problems that people encounter while interacting with buildings and space. Examples of practice areas for environmental graphic designers are wayfinding, placemaking and identity, branded environments, exhibitions and museum displays, public installations and more recently dynamic digital environments.
the professional association for environmental graphic designers is called Society for Experiential Graphic Design, SEGD. Page Layout The page layout aspect of graphic design deals with the arrangement of elements, content, on a page, such as image placement, and text layout and style. Beginning from early illuminated pages in hand-copied books of the Middle Ages and proceeding down to intricate modern magazine and catalogue layouts, structured page design has long been a consideration in printed material. With print media, elements usually consist of type, text, images, pictures, and occasionally placeholder graphics for elements that are not printed with ink such as dye laser cutting, foil stamping or blind embossing. Interface Design Since the advent of the World Wide Web and computer software development, many graphic designers have become involved in interface design, in an environment commonly referred to as a graphical user interface GUI. This has included web design and software design, when end-user interactivity is a design consideration of the layout or interface. Combining visual communication skills with the interactive communication skills of user interaction and online branding, graphic designers often work with software developers and web developers to create both the look and feel of a website or software application and enhance the interactive experience of the user or website visitor. An important aspect of interface design is icon design. User Experience Design considers how a user interacts with and responds to an interface, service or product and adjusts it accordingly. Printmaking Printmaking is the process of making artworks by printing on paper and other materials or surfaces. Except in the case of monotyping, the process is capable of producing multiples of the same piece, which is called a print. Each piece is not a copy but an original since it is not a reproduction of another work of art and is technically known as an impression. Painting or drawing, on the other hand, creates a unique original piece of artwork. Prints are created from a single original surface, known technically as a matrix. Common types of matrices include, plates of metal, usually copper or zinc for engraving or etching. Stone, used for lithography blocks of wood for woodcuts, linoleum for lino cuts and fabric plates for screen printing. But there are many other kinds, discussed below. Works printed from a single plate create an edition, in modern times usually each signed a number to form a limited edition. Prints may also be published in book form, as artists' books. A single print could be the product of one or multiple techniques. Tools. The mind is an important graphic design tool. Aside from technology, graphic design requires judgment and creativity. Critical, observational, quantitative and analytic thinking are required for design layouts and rendering. If the executor is merely following a solution, for example sketch, script or instructions, provided by another designer, such as an art director, then the executor is not usually considered the designer. The method of presentation, for example arrangement, style, medium, may be equally important to the design. The appropriate development and presentation tools can substantially change how an audience perceives a project. The image or layout is produced using external traditional media and guides, or digital image editing tools on computers. Tools in computer graphics often take on traditional names such as scissors, or pen. Some graphic design tools such as a grid are used in both traditional and digital form. In the mid-1980s, the arrival of desktop publishing and graphic art software applications introduced a generation of designers to computer image manipulation and creation that had previously been manually executed. Computer graphic design enabled designers to instantly see the effects of layout or typographic changes, and to simulate the effects of traditional media without requiring a lot of space. However, traditional tools such as pencils or markers are useful even when computers are used for finalization. A designer or art director may hand sketch numerous concepts as part of the creative process. Some of these sketches may even be shown to a client for early stage approval, 
before the designer develops the idea further using a computer and graphic design software tools. Computers are considered an indispensable tool in the graphic design industry. Computers and software applications are generally seen by creative professionals as more effective production tools than traditional methods. However, some designers continue to use manual and traditional tools for production, such as Milton Glaser. New ideas can come by way of experimenting with tools and methods. Some designers explore ideas using pencil and paper. Others use many different mark-making tools and resources from computers to sculpture as a means of inspiring creativity. One of the key features of graphic design is that it makes a tool out of appropriate image selection in order to possibly convey meaning. Computers and the creative process There is some debate whether computers enhance the creative process of graphic design. Rapid production from the computer allows many designers to explore multiple ideas quickly with more detail than what could be achieved by traditional hand rendering or paste up on paper, moving the designer through the creative process more quickly. However, being faced with limitless choices does not help isolate the best design solution and can lead to endless iterations with no clear design outcome. A graphic designer may use sketches to explore multiple or complex ideas quickly without the distractions and complications of software. Hand-rendered comps are often used to get approval for an ideal execution before a designer invests time to produce finished visuals on a computer or in paste-up. The same thumbnail sketches or rough drafts on paper may be used to rapidly refine and produce the idea on a computer in a hybrid process. This hybrid process is especially useful in logo design where a software learning curve may detract from a creative thought process. The traditional design computer production hybrid process may be used for freeing one's creativity in page layout or image development as well. In the early days of computer publishing, many traditional graphic designers relied on computer-savvy production artists to produce their ideas from sketches, without needing to learn the computer skills themselves. However, this practice has been increasingly less common since the advent of desktop publishing over 30 years ago. The use of computers and graphic software is now taught in most graphic design courses. Nearly all of the popular and industry standard software programs used for graphic design since the early 1990s are products of Adobe Systems Incorporated. They are Adobe Photoshop, a raster-based program for photo editing, Adobe Illustrator, a vector-based program for drawing, Adobe InDesign, a page layout program, and Adobe Dreamweaver, for web page design. Another major page layout tool is Quark XPRESS, a product of Quark, Incorporated, a separate company from Adobe. Both Quark XPRESS and Adobe InDesign are often used in the final stage of the electronic design process. Raster images may have been edited in Adobe Photoshop logos and illustrations in Adobe Illustrator, and the final product assembled in one of the major page layout programs. Most graphic designers entering the field since about 1990 are expected to be proficient in at least one or two of these programs. Crowdsourcing in graphic design Jeff Howell Wired magazine first used the term crowdsourcing in his 2006 article, The Rise of Crowdsourcing. The phrase crowdsourcing creative work, CCW, was conceived at the workshop on crowdsourcing and human computation at CHI 2011. Creative work spans creative domains such as graphic design, crowdsourcing architecture, apparel design, writing, illustration. Tasks may be assigned to individuals or a group and may be categorized as convergent or divergent. An example of a divergent task is generating a large number of designs for a poster. An example of a convergent task is selecting one poster design. Occupations Graphic design career paths cover all ends of the creative spectrum and often overlap. Employment within graphic design involves workers performing specialized tasks, such as design services, publishing, advertising, and public relations while receiving a median pay of $44,150 per year. The main job responsibility of a graphic designer is the arrangement of visual elements in some type of media. 
the main job titles within the industry can vary and are often country specific. They can include graphic designer, art director, creative director, animator and the entry level production artist. Depending on the industry served, the responsibilities may have different titles such as DTP associate, or graphic artist, but despite changes in title, graphic design principles remain consistent. The responsibilities may come from, or lead to, specialized skills such as illustration, photography, animation or interactive design. Today's graduating graphic design students are normally exposed to all of these areas of graphic design and urged to become familiar with all of them as well in order to be competitive. Graphic designers will face strong competition when applying for positions, in which organizations are looking for candidates with convincing talents and a college-level education. Field requirements consist of having strong portfolio and a bachelor's degree. Due to the increase in technology, employment rates within computer systems design are expecting a 35% increase, while traditional designs, such as publications, are facing slower rates of 16% or less. Graphic designers can work in a variety of environments. Whilst many will work within companies devoted specifically to the industry, such as design consultancies or branding agencies, others may work within publishing, marketing or other communications companies. Increasingly, especially since the introduction of personal computers to the industry, many graphic designers have found themselves working within non-design oriented organizations, as in-house designers. Graphic designers may also work as freelance designers, working on their own terms, prices, ideas, etc. A graphic designer reports to the art director, creative director or senior media creative. As a designer becomes more senior, they may spend less time designing media and more time leading and directing other designers on broader creative activities, such as brand development and corporate identity development. They are often expected to interact more directly with clients, for example taking and interpreting briefs, 